right, Kimmy, what did we learn about last week? Uh, that during the era of silence, oh, it's about like Alexander God was preparing the way for Jesus. Yes, the era of silence. Josh, what's the formal name for the era of silence? Uh, something Tesla. <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> something. Testimonial. Huh? No, it has Tesla in it. No, it has Testa. Testa, Testa, Testa same Old Testament. Elmer? Marty? Yeah. No, no, no. Intertestamental. Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Intertesta. Testa, not Tesla. Uh, Testa. <laughs> mental. Okay. Give me one, one thing that, that you got from it. Let's see. Dave, give me something. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. That's probably what stands out the most. What about him, Sol? He ruled a lot of land. And he uh, made currency. He made um, all the roads. Education. Ah, why is this one important, Elmer? Because they all spoke the same language. One language. Which language was that? Greek. Stimo, okay. Greek. Greek. <laughs> Ooh. Greek. Very important, right? Oh, New Testament is written in Greek, Old Testament is written in Hebrew, right? So it took from Hebrew, wrote it into Greek. Ten points for whoever can tell me what that Bible was called. I'll give you ten bucks. The Bible? The Bible that was translated from the Hebrew to the Greek. Uh, $10 by the 72. Oh. Ha. Ah, goodness. I know it. Man. Okay. I thought you were. The Septuagint. Yeah? Oh, it's the Septuagint. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, so, the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> the question I left off with, off, off with, good. I'm glad you know this. This pretty much is <coughs> the important stuff of, of, of the. Um, the, the intertestamental period and the Maccabean Revolt because the Maccabean Revolt actually has the book of Maccabeus which is in the um, Catholic Bible so the book of Maccabeus is in the Catholic Bible which has to do with John Better. Joseph Maccabeus okay? so the era of silence I left last week with a question what was my question Kimmy I know. what was the question are we in one? Are we in one? Right? Are we in an era of silence today? Why do I ask this question, Josh? Because there's no direct communication with God still. How did God communicate in the Old Testament? Prophet. Literally. Two ways, huh? Like literally. Literally communicated, right? And how else? Uh, prophet. Through a prophet, right? Or in angels, right? Huh? Angels, right? Angels, okay. Angels? No. He sent down an angel. Old Testament? Yeah. Yeah. New Testament mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And there was one more, right? There was well, That's kind of in both as well. And what about in the New Testament? How does God reveal himself? Jesus. Through Jesus, Jesus, right? Through Jesus. That's reveals himself. Another way that God reveals himself, or they did in the Old Testament New Testament, is by visions. Mm -hmm. Right? Or dreams. That's definitely a way that he did it. Now, today, and the question I leave off with, um, I left off with is, are we living in the era of silence? Just why does, or the question was, was asked, why does God not talk to us or reveal himself in the way that he used to? Like, why not, right? Marty brought up a, a couple of points. He said, I think, I think he does. You know, um, when we pray, he answers. Uh, he still heals, and he does. I'm not saying he doesn't. But not in the way that it happened biblically. It doesn't happen like that anymore, at least not from my experience. And not that I've seen it. I don't know what you've seen. I don't know if you've lived it, which you could correct me on. Okay? So why not? Are we in the era of silence? Anyone? Or start picking names. Go ahead. I just disagree. I'm not. It's a question. I know you're asking that <laughs> answer. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just, I think the way that you're saying, like, how he did back then, like, open the sea, 
drop down pillar of fire in that aspect to that magnitude i don't think i've personally seen it but i've also seen and like where he's spoken like you know um through different people so i don't believe that he's silent okay you want to say something oh yeah i, th I think just to clarify the question you're asking not not is that he is in the way that he communicated before. Well, maybe not so much communication. That sounds like you're asking a little more about is he actively moving like he was in the New Testament with the miracles and all of that. Oh, I guess we can tie it in. Is that what you were asking? Though? No, it's more of like the direct communication. I think, but in the way that you're putting it, I think we can tie it in. Like how he reveals like himself? How he reveals like himself. the man, like in power. In that magnitude. In the visible way that everyone else got to see it. So, through, like through the apostles and the miracles, to yes, through the Old Testament, the things that happened. Happen. I mean, through the prophets, right? You could argue that we see it; it's just not true. I mean, how many people have said that they have like messenger from God because God spoke to them directly? The world's gonna end in so and so many days, and then that day comes and it's like, right? You know, so, so you can, we've seen it proclaimed, but from there to be true. We also. We also, we see them proclaim it, we also well, the witnesses of the falsehood, right? Like, that's the problem. How false it has been. Or how many people, you know, especially our brothers and sisters who are Pentecostal who receive directly a message from the Holy Spirit. And like I said last week, be careful that whatever you receive from the Spirit does not contradict what the Bible says. Because if, if the Spirit will only reveal, God will reveal Himself, but He will not contradict Himself. So we have to be very careful with that. Right. So if God's going to reveal himself through the Spirit, through his Spirit, he's not going to contradict what he's already stated. So we have to be careful with that, right? So why doesn't God reveal himself, talk to us, or manifest himself in the way that he used to? Anyway. Different times, pretty much. It's like, first it was God talking directly, then it was Jesus, and now it's the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yes, right? Old Testament, it was like direct, and it was prophets, right? And then New Testament, Jesus. And then today, what? Today? Spirit. Holy Spirit, right? That's kind of like the lines of communication. Okay. Let's look at some stuff, and I, I'll give you my perspective on why I think, or I feel that the Bible, or just in general, why it's different today. Okay, let's go to Rich Man and Lazarus. Okay, Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Luke 16, 19. Go ahead, Mike. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple. What's purple? Man. What's purple mean? Royalty. 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 And fine linen, and fared simultaneously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at the at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels of Abraham's bosom to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Okay, so we have two men. Which men are we have? Lazarus. Lazarus and the rich man. Oh, yeah, the rich man. Okay. Now, what did the what did the what is the Lazarus desired? What did he want? Food. Food from where? The table. Does the Bible tell us that the man gave him food? No. It does not. Okay. So what happens to both men? They die. They both die, and it's it's, it's amazing how it states it different, right? Twenty two says the time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. And also, the rich man was buried. Okay, 23. So. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Okay, what does he call Abraham? Father. Father. What does that mean, bro? Uh... What, no, what does it mean to call him Father Abraham? What does that mean? He was a Jew. He was a Jew. They were both Jews. 
So if you call it, Abraham was the father of the faith, so they called him father. So the fact that they call him father meant that he was Jewish. He, in a sense, had an obligation to help his Jewish brothers. Okay? Keep going. Oh, and I'm sorry. And what does the rich man ask of God? How does he want the water delivered? Give me. Uh, tip of his finger. Whose finger? Lazarus' finger, right? So the rich man says, send Lazarus to wet his hand and with the tip of his finger just drop the water onto my tongue. Mm -hmm. Even in death, according to the parable, the rich man still has this sense of, what's the word? Um, what's that word? Entitlement. Right? He's like, send Lazarus to wet his finger and to come pour it in my tongue. Okay? Keep going. Can we read now? Your turn. 25? Yes. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus is like manner evil things. Um, but now he is com comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf, so that those who would pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to you. Right, here's the part I want to get through. He said, then I pray you, Father, to send him to my father's house. Look, he's still asking God to send Lazarus. Right? He's telling him, please send Lazarus. Where does he want to send him? His okay, father's father. house. To his father's house. Okay, keep going. For I have five brothers to testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Okay, so what does Lazarus ask? What does he want from God? To, um... No, the rich man. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. What does the rich man want from God? What is he asking him? Asking for the prophets. Nope. What is he asking him, Dave? To go to his house. Who? His father's house. His father's house. Who does he want Lazarus. to go to his house? Lazarus. Lazarus. The rich man wants Lazarus to go to his house and do what? Warn his brothers. Warn his, Warn his brothers. brothers. And what does Jesus? What does God say? What does he they say? Have, they have Moses. And they the have prophets. Moses and the prophets. And then God says what? No, and then the rich man says what? What does he say? They won't be convinced. He's like, no, like, if someone from the dead goes, then they'll listen. See, they have Moses and the prophets. Did they listen to Moses and the prophets? No. Well, no, because he's saying, he, he's saying, no, 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 not Moses and the prophets, because obviously they already have that. Send somebody from the dead to go talk to them. And what does God say? Why did he say no? Because he didn't hear Moses and the prophets. Yeah, but what does he say? What does he say? What does he say? But even if he does that, they won't be persuaded. Even if someone from the dead comes and talks to them, it won't be enough. Okay? It won't be enough. All right. First Samuel, chapter 2. Verse yet. Who is Eli? Let's see. You guys know who Eli was? Yeah. Uh, he never died. Nope. That's not him. That was Elijah. That was, uh, that was Elijah. Who is Eli? Sorry. Uh, I'm like drawing a big blank right now. Kimmy, who is Eli? Um, the, um, that's kind of embarrassing. Huh? Um, oh, I, I feel like I know, but I just. It won't come out. <laughs> 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 Rob, who's he like? He was a priest, he said. Priest. He was a priest. Who was he? Who, who worked under him? Samuel. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Rob. I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> okay? Eli was a priest. 
Okay? Samuel worked under him. He is the one that told Samuel, if you hear that voice again, say, Lord, I am here, speak, your servant hears. That's, that's who told Samuel that. Eli. Eli was a priest. Now, let me ask you something. What are the requirements of a priest? Perfect. They have, well, I think they had one in the Levite. At one time, they had to be From the line of Aaron? Yeah. All right. What else, though? Other than the fact of their lineage, what is required of them as, as a person? Purity. I mean, holiness, right? Yeah. Were the priests ever, um, did they ever see things that were, like, maybe unexplainable and miraculous, do you think? Do you think they ever saw the glory of God in the temple? Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely, right? You guys, you guys, you guys remember what the word <coughs> for the glory of God in, in the holies of holies is? Shekinah. The Shekinah of God, right? Eli was a witness to the very presence of God in the holies of holies. This dude was no joke. I mean, he was a priest. To be a priest. Mm -hmm. You are at the top of your Christian game, if you want to put it that way. You're immaculate. Okay. Now look at something. First Samuel chapter two, verse twenty-two. I'm sorry, verse twelve. What's the title of that section? Eli's worthless son. Eli's what? Family judge. Twelve. Eli's worthless son. Eli's worthless son. Some say wicked son. <laughs> no, you have a different version. So, something happened between Eli and his kids. Like, something happened here that we don't know what occurred. Like, something's off. Now, if you read 22, uh, look, look at what it says. I'll read it. It says, Now, Eli was very old. And heard about everything his sons were doing to all of Israel and how they slept with women who served at the entrance of the tent meeting. So Eli, like, he's he's the man. Like, he's a priest. He's, he's the top of his game. But his kids, the Bible says his kids are worthless. Then the worst thing that is, if you keep reading, Eli let them get away with it. Which is unexplainable, right? It's inexplicable. Like, how can you be this Christian... But then let your kids get away with certain things. I'm getting somewhere with this, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. Okay. Now. I'll do one more. Go to, uh, go to uh, First Kings. Chapter 18. First Kings what? First Kings chapter 18. Verse. Verse 16. What's the title of that? There is no title. Elijah and the prophets of God. Yep. Thank you, Kimmy. What story is that? So What story is that? It's a very popular story. You guys know this story. You said 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 16, right? 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 16. So your leader to your rescue, Rob, what story is that? That's when um, Elijah asks all the prophets to just prove that the God's real. And he'll prove that his God's real. Right. So what did they do? There's two altars made, right? Two altars oh, made. The one, two, two, right? This one was for Baal, right? Yeah. This one was for God. And what did the Baal prophets do? They like cut themselves. They chanted. They did everything they, possible. They danced around, and then, and then I mean, did something happen? Nothing. Nothing happened. And then, and then, okay, and then Elijah says, "All right, my turn." And what does Elijah do? He pours water. And there's a bull, there's water, he's like, put more wood on there, put whatever, you know, put whatever you want to put, and then what happens? And then a light he prays, and what? Uh, fire comes down. And what does the fire do? Consumes even the, the rocks and the water and all the 
consumes the very rocks. Okay. Cheers. Now, the very act where Elijah prays to God and he says, Father, show yourself that you may be glorified and send fire from heaven. And he does. How would you feel if that happened? Like if you were Elijah, like inside, how would you feel? What do you think? How would you feel? The man. Huh? I'd be, uh, be the man. Really? I mean, because I would. I'd be on cloud nine. I would feel completely untouchable at that moment. If I can do this to the wood, what can I do with you guys? Look, it, it's to the point where, it, it, it gets to the point where he takes the king. He takes, no, no. Uh, after he's done and the fire comes, he takes the sword and he kills every every pagan priest. One by one, he kills them. All right? He just sent fire from heaven and now he's killed every priest. There's about 400 of them. Like, humanly, physically speaking, like, how are you feeling right now? Like, if you were Elijah. The man, well, completely untouchable. Now look at this. Uh, Kings chapter 19, verse 1. Now Ahab <clears throat> was a king at the time. Read with me. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done. And how he killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me and ever be so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Was she happy? Was Jezebel happy? No. What, did she say? what was she saying to Elijah? What was she saying, Kim? Um... I guess Tim, I don't know. She wants to kill a girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So she says to Elijah, she said, no, man, she said, I am going to kill you like you killed all the priests. And what does Elijah do in verse 3? He gets scared. He gets scared. And what does he do? Right. He runs for his life. Now, Elijah just sent fire from heaven. Just killed 400 priests, and a woman sends him a message, and he gets scared. He gets scared, and he runs. Okay. Why am I saying this? Like, why? Why am I making all these stories, right? Between right Lazarus, Eli, and Elijah. Okay. What does this have to do with the era of silence? And what does it have to do with um, God not speaking to us? What am I? Why am I saying this? The reason I say it is because if God were to speak to us, if we were to send, if God was to send someone from the dead to talk to you, like, like the rich man of Lazarus was asking, if God was to give, give you proof that he would send fire from heaven when you asked him to, if, if God would make you the holy person that you wanted to be in the sense that you wanted to be it, it wouldn't make one bit of difference in your life. It wouldn't matter. Like you would still doubt. The world will continue to doubt. Like the reason I, f I feel that God does not do it, or he doesn't communicate in the way that he does, or he doesn't show himself in the way that he used to in the Old and the New Testament, is because it doesn't make a difference. People will stop, will still not believe, and people will still doubt, and people will still um, uh, not give God the credit and the glory that he deserves. Go ahead. But I don't think that stops him from doing it. But he doesn't do it. To that magnitude. Right. Because we're not in those terms. And he doesn't do it to that magnitude. I feel it's because it doesn't matter. How? Uh, and let's, let's look at this, right? Eli was, was a priest. Listen, Eli was holier than any, you and I will ever be. I'll put it to you that way. Eli was closer to God during his priesthood than you and I will ever be. 
There, there's no doubt about that. Elijah had more faith than you and I will ever have. But it didn't matter. For some reason, their humanness, the fact that they were human, for some reason, always took over. It always came back. It, it just so I don't think God does it anymore. I don't because for two reasons. Why? It doesn't, it won't make a bit of difference. It won't. If God communicated with you or with people or with us in the way that he did in the Old Testament, people will still not believe. Two, God has already said everything that he needed to say. God has nothing else to say. Everything you need to know. <clears throat> Everything that you need to know for your salvation, everything that you need to know for your relationship with God, everything that, that you need um, in order for your eternal life to be secure is already said. He already stated. He's already spoken. He's already proved it. He doesn't need to do it anymore. And John tells us this. Here, and we have more examples. Look, Israel and Egypt. Israel literally saw, literally saw the presence of God during the day and at night. Yeah? Literally, um, Israel literally saw the sea before them part. And what did they do as soon as they got to the other side? Worship the calf. Worship the fake God. Did the miracle matter? No. No. They physically saw, with their own eyes, that the sea split in half. And the moment they got scared, what did they do? They ran back to their other gods. Why? Why? Go ahead. Well, now my thought left. Oh, uh, I think it's a reflection of both parties. Like, it's a reflection of us in our human likeness. And, yeah, we do see it, oh, and not just in the old, but in the new. We see it, too. But at the same time, it's also a reflection of God, not just because he's already said what he said doesn't mean that he's no longer going to seek us or desire us. Okay. So I think it, it's a reflection of both. Yeah. I just, I, I don't see God he reflect over um manifesting or showing himself anymore in the way that he used to in the way that he used to that, that's my only thing it's not that he doesn't seek after us it's not that he doesn't talk to us at all but in the fashion and in the manner that he was that it was done priorly where it was just so and I'll say it this way physically evident of his presence and his work his immediate work we don't have that anymore or it's just not reflected that way anymore. Like it's, and it's not a reflection of him. It's a reflection of us and where we're at. I believe it is. I mean, I believe that, like, um, he just doesn't do it in that fashion because it doesn't matter. Like, no matter what he does, we're still going to uh, run back to that human nature that we have. We're still going to run to it. We're still going to fall back on it. But then I don't like, I just don't like the way that it's sounding because then it's discouraging. It's more of like, you'd say that to a new believer, you're just like, what's the point? Like, you know what I mean? There's no hope in that. There's no, like, well, there's absolute hope in that. no, no, but I'm, where you're coming from is like, God doesn't speak to us like he used to anymore. It's like, but you can't say God does not speak. Yeah, he may not do it in the way that he did in the old times, but there is no way that God does not speak. Well, I think the audience, he speaks to an audience. This is how he speaks. I know, but I'm saying in the way, like with the miracles, with that, with that, like, yeah, yeah I understand what you're saying, but like, the words, maybe, it's creating this, like, other picture, I don't know, I'm not making any sense, but. It's just, look, there, there's, a, there's a personal relationship that exists in which God will reveal himself to you personally. Okay. Absolutely, right? But what God has to say to humanity or what he has to say to the world or what he has to say about himself has already been said. That's already said. It's already said. We're not 
You're not going to learn anything new about God that He hasn't revealed already. You might learn something new about you that God might reveal to yourself, to you, to your situation. But God has already revealed Himself. He's already, mm -hmm. we already know who He is. He's already declared, He's already spoken to us. Like, if you want to get to know God, this, this is it right here. Right? Th this is what He's going to show you. No. There will be personal revelations that God will give you. Revelations about yourself, about your situation. There are things that He will let you know, but like revelations about salvation, about eternity, about these things, those things, you're only going to find them here. And if anyone says they have a new revelation that's outside of this, it's dangerous. That, that you got to be very careful with it. Okay. So, and the reason I, I bring it, and it sounds a little harsh, but at the same time, it's actually pretty amazing. It's because of what John says. John chapter 20, verse 29. Actually, let's, let's start from 24. I'll read it. Um... So John chapter 24, verse 29. And it says, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger in the nail where the nails were, and put my hand to his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hand. Reach out your hand and put, your, into your, put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas says, My Lord, my God. And look at what Jesus says. This is, this is the part that's for us today. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's us. <sighs> That's us. We are the blessed ones. <sighs> Listen, there was a privilege that existed in the Old Testament and the New Testament that they were witnesses to what they were seeing. That was a privilege. But Jesus says, blessed are you who even though you haven't seen me, you still believe. And that blessing is only for us. That blessing is only ours. Mm -hmm. That's what sets us apart. Mm -hmm. We don't believe because we've seen it. Which we believe even though we haven't seen it. We believe by faith. That's what makes us special. That's what makes us unique. And I feel that that's what our, I, I hate to say it this way, our, even our compensation maybe, our, our, our reward will be different. I think it'll, I, I don't even know how to say it. It's just Jesus saying, blessed are you because you haven't seen me and you still believe in me. That's huge. That's that's faith. <clears throat> that's blind, almost blind faith in Christ. To look at the sea part in half, to, to see mirror, to see fire come down from heaven, to see a lame walk right in front of you and get up. That's believing because you're seeing it. But to be able to believe just because you have faith in this God that exists, now that's special. That just requires a lot more from us. It, 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 there's a lack of humanity that you leave behind. There's a lack of lack of um, of trust that you have in God that He is who He says He is. That's us. That's the reason I believe that God doesn't communicate in the way that He used to, or to reveal Himself in the way that He used to reveal Himself. One, because I don't think it would make a bit of a difference. Uh, I don't. Two, because God has already said everything that He wants to wants to say to us. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is everything that God wants us to know. And third, because we are blessed because we have not seen and we still believe. That is who we are in Christ. Questions? Comments? Someone still doesn't like this? Comment. Go ahead. I, just, I was thinking about the, uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in all of us. And that in a way, it's like God has spoken more than ever before because he speaks to us individually now, millions in his spirit, not through one audible voice uh, that only one person can hear. It's intimate. It's in each one of us in the spirit. And, you know, yeah, I think the New Testament's clear that a lot of people don't because they, they're they blinded by you know, the devil. You know, and that God has given us the grace to be able to see reality that, that he Know what he's done, which is a which is a gift for us to just to even see it. But yeah, I believe he speaks. With, you know, of course, through his word. That's the the word is alive, and and through the spirit to all of us, whoever wants to listen. Yeah. A lot of us don't really want it. That, I like that. It, it is more intimate now because it's personal. Like only you would know the answer to your question in your situation. Like really, like it is more intimate in a sense, right? So, yeah. Question, comment. Somebody does not like this. I was worried for a second when you were going up there. <laughs> uh,